Thank you, Madam Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. This session's theme highlights what the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies considers key to achieving significant progress in reducing vulnerability and disaster risk. Local action and working at scale with at ri high risk people and communities is the real test for the disaster risk reduction community. Our network of Red Cross and Red Crescent national societies around the globe is making a daily difference in the lives of vulnerable people and communities through disaster preparedness, response, and risk reduction activities. Our global strategy 2020 guides our 186 national Red Cross and Red Crescent societies in saving lives, protecting livelihoods, strengthening recovery, and enabling healthy and safe living. This requires effective preparedness, timely response to disasters and improved recovery, and can only be achieved with local knowledge and understanding. Environmentally sustainable living must be increased and communities empowered to devise their own ways to manage hazards and reduce their own exposure and vulnerability. Disaster risks are both a humanitarian and developmental concern. The humanitarian community has worked hard to reduce disaster and health risks in recent emergency operations and to build a stronger basis for longer-term disaster risk reduction in recovery and rehabilitation. Effective collaboration between humanitarian and developmental organizations is crucial in mainstreaming risk reduction into sustainable development work in areas such as health, water, sanitation, and food security. Red Cross and Red Crescent societies call on their governments to strengthen the role of at-risk people and communities and community-based organizations in disaster risk management laws. Excellencies, the world is changing rapidly. There is notable increase in the number and complexity of disasters worldwide, and we must also come to terms with the often dramatic consequences of migration, urbanization, economic and political turmoil, and the increase in non-communicable diseases. Statements of intent alone will not give us lasting credibility with people who need our support. The Federation is fully committed to play its part in risk reduction, and we must all hold each other fully accountable for acting upon the commitments we make during this global platform. I thank you, Madam Chair.